Hello and welcome to the Community Voices, and I am Jimmy Hassan. We here in Kingston have not been exempt from the pandemic which has ravaged the country and world at large. We are lucky that in this city we have been working our hardest to help control the situation and the city council should be celebrated for their attempts to help us. However, to do this, they have had to make many changes. The annual budget has been funneled into damage control. Many initiatives on their 2019 and 20 plan had to be delayed or changed. Even city council meetings have changed to account for social distancing. We need to think about the next step in the recovery of our city's economy. Here to talk about the plans for moving forward and trying to get Kingston up and running again. Please join me to welcome city councilors Lisa Osanik, Jeff McLaren, and Simon Chappelle. Thank you for your time and thank you for joining me. Thank you, Jimmy. Jimmy. The first question is, how drastically did the budget have to or will be changed due to this COVID-19? And Jeff, it's your turn. So it's been changed a lot. Uh, we've had to defer a lot of our programs, capital works, and uh, also services that we offer. Uh, the result is that um, uh, from deferring and from savings and all that stuff, that we're still going to be in the hole by about $4 million in August. And it looks like it might be getting worse by the end of the year. Um, it's hard to see what, um, what we can do. We are mandated to do a lot of the stuff, but uh, we've also got to keep people safe. Thank you. And uh... Lisa, the same question to you. We had a special council meeting called um, in mid-May so that we could find out exactly what our financial position was in. Um, in that, we got our strategic plan and the list of all the projects in it and which projects would have to be deferred till next year or even the year 2022 to try to um, you know, manage that financial gap that we weren't predicting due to COVID. So some projects have definitely been deferred till um, further years, um, a lot of capital projects. There's some projects in the waterfront master plan, for example, um, the Bell Park master plan has been um, deferred out. Um, some new um, work for the active transportation master plan, like for pedestrian crossings, some new upgrades to bus stops and um, you know, uh, um, pads to wait for the bus and sidewalks for active transportation, they've been deferred out. So staff are definitely trying their hardest to um, try to address this financial gap. And where our problem is as a municipality, like all municipalities, we can't carry a deficit to the next year. It would have to be, any deficit would have to be made up by um, the following year's property taxes. And with this council, like we've been 2.5% um, increase in property taxes for the last several years. We had hoped for next year, starting in 2021, to bring that down to, you know, like um, instead of 2.5, 2.4 in the following year, 2.1, 2.0. And it looks like I would think with this um, financial gap that we have because of COVID, we're going to have to stick to 2.5 and hopefully not more than that. Thank you. And Councillor Simon, what your take? The district I represent is impacted quite a bit. Uh, there are some parks that were supposed to come online with uh, new facilities that will be deferred. Uh, there are issues, uh, well, transit issues uh, of expansion that are, is not going to go forward. Very hopeful that the uh, turtle fencing along Highway 2 between Baxter Drive and Hawk the creek does remain. Uh, I, I'm certain Lisa shares that view with me. But a lot of the more active transportation, active community aspects are deferred. I'm concerned that some of our um, lightly used roads, uh, roads like um, up on uh, up, up, up Baxter Avenue, but um, um, Eunice Drive, those roads are, have not been repaired since amalgamation. I was hoping that they would be addressed this year because the potholes are, the road's not workable anymore. But so there's a lot of issues that um, have been have been slowed. Uh, Centennial Drive still has not opened up yet. Uh, there's been delays with that road. And there's a new hotel that's opening. There's other expansions up in that area as well. So my concern is that uh, we have run a rather lean ship with regards to 
in increasing property taxes. Many people on council would like to see that uh, reduced further, but there's going to be increased pressures uh, on how we address this. Now we've been able to make some savings based on reducing our capital expenditures, but our operating expenses have not necessarily uh, shared the brunt of, of these, these issues. And one thing that I've advocated at uh, one of our council meetings is that I do believe it's time that the city of Kingston follows what other major municipalities have, and that is having councillors take ownership and responsibility in, in uh, some more of the finances by initiating an audit and finance committee that'll, that actually takes perhaps one, one, one uh, department year by year and does a line by line budget to see where we could you know, find efficiencies or synergies between different departments. Uh, there, there's got to be something that we can do because it, every year our operation budgets just keep continuing to grow. And with this year and the lack of tourism, uh, well, not the not people don't want to come here. It's just that everything's been held down in the province. That was a huge boon for us. And it's very painful to see our, our downtown suffering as well as many businesses in the West End. I'm seeing where more and more businesses are closing up and and that saddens me because that commercial property tax is certainly a key component in helping us have a stable uh, property tax look. I will go to uh, Councillor Lisa. The last year uh, in the budget for 2019 and 2020, the city set five strategic uh, priority. How those priority has been affected in number one, I will ask you how bad is affected the housing which was the biggest challenge in our city and the biggest issue uh, for the population. Definitely for housing, for example, um, our, uh, our permits, um, well, construction all stopped, right? With, except for road construction, infrastructure um, construction. But as far as housing construction, that all stopped with COVID. And so like the planning department, you know, they've seen that the planning fees, you know, like there's just not the planning applications that, the permits for our building and licensing has gone down. Um, and then, yeah, we have a housing shortage. We have a housing shortage and like we need um, all the apartments to be built that planning you know, department have approved. Um, all that had to stop and, um, uh, and we can't afford that to stop. But luckily just recently, uh, you know, like since the end of May, that construction has now started again. And so that's excellent. But uh, there was definitely two months there where everything stopped and, and um, you know, like we can see um, like Bell Park, right? All the, uh, like we have uh, almost 50 people living at Bell Park because they can't find affordable housing. Uh, we were going through the process of um, licensing, you know, um, the Airbnbs in Kingston, right? And all of that work had to stop as well. And the Airbnbs have been severely affected um, as well. So uh, COVID has definitely, you know, struck against mm -hmm. um, our strategic priorities that we had done last year at the start of council. Okay. Um, Simon, can you highlight uh, something if you have uh, any information available? In coming up uh, budget for 2020 and 21, is the city is it ready to reschedule those uh, priorities? Well, I, I think we definitely need a, an adult conversation because there isn't enough money in the pool. Certainly, housing is an issue that I'm certain is going to stay at the forefront. Uh, you know, we we have a significant problems that we need to address with that. Um, I mean, we haven't seen the worst of it because we're still many residents are still receiving the uh, the supplement from the federal government. Should that suddenly stop, we're going to be in an issue where people are going to be living a very tenuous life. <clears throat> Pardon me. So I think that uh, the environment is still a priority with many of the councillors. So we're going to have a balance between environmental issues, housing issues. I don't see us proceed, proceeding with, with uh, you know, Deepwater Port or a, a downtown camp for St. Lawrence College. I, I can't see those really progressing forward only because we're going to have to double down on the most essential of services and uh, ensure that those that are most vulnerable are addressed. And I think that's what the citizens of Kingston really want is to make sure that those in the greatest need are the ones that uh, are addressed rather than and trying to look forward. I, and it's, it's so frustrating because 
there's so many things that Kingston can be doing. It's just there's limited amount of money, and I think next year's budget is going to be very difficult. But I think it's going to be more than the typical three days of budget discussions. We'll have to have larger focus groups on issues, and I think perhaps as Councillor McLaren has advocated for in the past, you know, a precipitatory budgetary process where maybe more citizens become engaged and help us direct where we want to see the, the, the changes happen. And Councillor McLaren, um, the question to you is, the, it was an other priority on the uh, last budget for the environment. And definitely the pandemic is contributing to delay everything, not only here in Kingston, around the country and around the globe. Um, what do you think, how bad is that uh, priority has been affected uh, due, due to this pandemic? It's an opportunity to prepare for these kind of possibilities uh, in the past. Uh, if we had had a more integrated uh, non-tax revenue strategy when the tax revenue started to dry up, we would have been more prepared for it and been able to deal with it in a better way and perhaps minimize the losses. Going forward, had we had one, we would have also been able to tailor it um, in an integrated fashion as opposed to piecemeal that we bring now uh, in the best directed possible way. So for example, one of the things that um, we're talking about now is can we reduce the cost for businesses in order to get them running, uh, from running again? So for example, construction fees and stuff like that. Um, doing anything piecemeal is always less effective than if we had done it integratedly from the beginning. And um, I'm hoping that uh, we can get that done in the future. But, um, we really did miss an opportunity to um, cushion the blow that we suffered. And as a result, I think it was worse than it uh, could have been. I think also our recovery is going to be slower than it should have been because we didn't prepare ahead of time. And um, yeah, that falls on council. Hmm. Councillor Simon, I'd like to ask you, um, you know the, how much damage has been done to our economy nationally, uh, not only in our country, but everywhere in the world, every country has gone to the same scenario, same issue with the same uh, problem with the economy is not um, there to survive or afford further up from here. How bad is our economy, local economy here in Kingston, is, is been affected and what you, as a council, as a councillor, what you guys have been talking about it to recover it? Well, certainly uh, with regards to small business, I think they're the ones that are greatly impacted. The one businesses that do not own the properties that they have, operate their business out of are at the greatest risk because they're still needing to pay commercial tenancy rent and insurance and everything that uh, goes along with running a business if they have limited income. And, you know, the business income supplement for employees, I, I'm not sure how much longer that can last or how sustainable that is. So that is my biggest concern. I, I don't want to see a hollowing out of some of the fine places that we have for, for dining and, 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 and opportunities for, for you know, unique stores in Kingston. That, that is a concern for, for us. And I know that um, there, are, there is a, an economic development uh, team that the mayor has put together that's looking at ways to try to mitigate that risk and, and, and support businesses with applications or innovative ways to bring forward business to them by helping them get online if they haven't already been online and market uh, tourism Kingston is very heavily marketing shop at home buy local I think that's what everyone here can do is try to purchase locally or you know do a takeout meal at least once a week you know I, I, there's an interesting campaign called takeout Tuesday and people are out there ordering takeout to make sure that the local businesses are are sur surviving that way so I mean you know Pizza Pizza is a great place to, to order some takeout, and uh, perhaps uh, that's an opportunity for, you know, a plug for you, Jimmy, that, that uh, we need to ensure that we support our small businesses because at the end of the day, they're the ones that, you know, pay for the soccer teams and the hockey sponsorships and, and are vested and are here in, in Kingston. Well, thank you very much for uh, supporting my business, and I wish that all, all of you should order once a week so I, I can survive too. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor McLaren, uh, back to you again. Um, what do you think that the city, city has been providing services to the community? How that city is handling now to, um, to through, through this crisis time? I think the city is doing the best it can under the circumstances, but I think there are a few things that are missing and that are, could be added. So for example, 
I mean, I'm a bit economic development. One thing was mentioned that we should be shopping local, but that's at least one of the three components that are necessary for economic development. We need to increase the funds coming into the city. So um, at every step of the way, we should be supporting uh, the sort of uh, payments to people in the city. We should be working for grants all the time. Um, anything we can do to bring money into the city is a very good thing right now, especially since we lost tourism income and uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, and like the airport, that's costing us a ton of money right now because it's closed and it probably won't be open until our Canada is able to make money again for traveling internationally. So all of these things have to be taken into consideration. But the second thing is also the circulation of money within the local economy. It's not enough that everybody saves and just shops locally. They have to actually shop continuously locally. Um, so those are the three aspects. So you have to keep the money in the community, keep it from leaking out, circulate it within the, in the community and attract more money into the community. All these things are hopefully the concerns of um, many of our, of our uh, programs and uh, uh, agencies and boards. Mm -hmm. um, but in my, in my experience, uh, they've only been focusing on one, maybe one and a half of those. Uh, so I think that we could be doing a lot better than we have been. Um, and really, it comes down to having an integrated economic development strategy that is actually uh, looks at all options, which um, I understand we aren't. And, uh, and we really do need an impact revenue strategy, which we have. Councillor Osanik. Yes. May I ask you to share with us that if the pandemic, now we are talking, the people are start talking about it already. If the second wave of um, COVID-19 is come back and hit the world again, is our city the prepared is any plan in place or the council has been discussing about that possible scenario? We have a really strong, you know, medical officer of health, Dr. Moore at the public health unit. And he has talked to council about this second wave. And I know that they're making plans for it and that everything we've learned since March, it will be that much easier than in the fall. We won't be taken by surprise. Um, will be able to react, you know, uh, very fast um, to it. Like even with the workplaces, like so many people are still working from home and, um, and that could continue in the fall. Or, you know, if they do start to go back to the workplace, if we get that second wave, it'll, everyone already will have a laptop. They'll already know how to use Zoom. It will be a lot easier to go back to how we are right now if this um, second wave occurs. We also have, um, you know, the different websites now promoting local business. Um, we just had Love Kingston Marketplace launched, uh, which is um, the one lane closures in the downtown area on Princess Street and, and Brock Street. Um, uh, and, and so that campaign will continue on and, um, I think, I think we will be a lot more prepared if there is a second wave, which they say undoubtedly could definitely happen um, later this fall. Whatever the loss we, loss we have to, or damage we have to our economy here in Kingston or city of Kingston lost the revenue due to this pandemic. What is the plan you guys are putting together or discussing that how are we going to recover that revenue gap? So, um, again, I suggest that we uh, look for any ways of attracting money to here. So I would be very much in support of a basic income guarantee. Uh, the, funds, the flow of funds into the community determines the aggregate, uh, aggregate amount of money that's disposable for the people. And that is what goes into paying uh, businesses to buy, when they buy pizzas, for example. Um, anything that we can do to do that is a good thing uh, to support the local economy. Um, Governments are in a bit of a different situation than businesses, where businesses can fail as a result of uh, not offering uh, proper services. Governments are different. We, we, we survive on taxes. And part of the reason for that is that we are supposed to grease the wheels of commerce and of industry in the hard times. So if we're thinking of cutting back, uh, we are probably doing a disservice to our community. And what this essentially means is that we have to figure out some way of getting more money into the community. So we really shouldn't be cutting back on our spending as much as we need to be, or as much as some people have been saying we have, because that's in fact the worst thing for a government to do. It's the best thing for a corporation or for a, an individual to do. But if government is supposed to be in the guardian 
of the local people and the population and the economy. Um, we shouldn't be acting and running away from this challenge at this moment. We actually have uh, the, uh, the economic situation is actually really good for this because interest rates are low, um, money is available, the governments are giving out the left, right, and center for um, these kind of things. We should be capitalizing on that as much as possible and taking as big advantage of that as possible. And I think uh, well, we are we're only doing a um, sort of a little bit better than average, uh, I'd say. Councillor Spell, your take? We uh, have quite a bit of debate on this issue because I actually believe that uh, we should be running our city a little more like a business. Uh, we should be pairing away things that are not part of the municipal mandate according to the Municipal Act. We have a great history in Kingston of taking over projects that were previously funded by previous levels of government and taking it on ownership for ourselves. And that ends up being paid for by the taxpayer at the local level, which creates a problem because eventually it's not sustainable if we try to be all things to all people. So I, I'm not in favor of continuing to spend. I think we do have to do what every family in Kingston is currently doing and is reassessing their service agreements with their telecommunications companies, trying to figure out ways to shave their family budgets. And I think we have a responsibility as the stewards of the city to do the same thing with our budgets to ensure that we're not impacting the families to any greater extent by outrageous property tax increases, which invariably may come if you continue to spend. So I, I disagree with Councillor McLaren, but we respectfully disagree. Well, thank you. Uh, and Councillor Osenik, uh, your take yeah. on Yeah, we can't um, increase the property taxes next year to try to make up for this. Um, staff are going to bring a further report in August about our financial gap. And um, I think we're going to have to have some strategic meetings uh, to look at what was in the works for um, you know, for the rest of, well, for next year and for 2022 and defer even more projects or just eliminate them uh, completely. Like one project that was going to be coming up later this year was the deep sea, you know, dock mm -hmm. that Councillor Chappelle had, had mentioned earlier. And now with, you know, uh, COVID, it, it, it was right on all the cruise ships. And so maybe this is not the best time. Like maybe we should defer that project for 10 years. <laughs> to mm -hmm. see what happens. Like, uh, I think we need to go to that strategic plan and really par it down and, um, you know, to try to shave some capital dollars um, off it more to um, address the financial gap that we have. Mm -hmm. We're in a tough situation, but all the municipalities are. We were just told at our last council meeting that we do have the COVID-19 uh, hardship, um, I think like the property tax program. So um, if you are a small business owner with an assessed value of under $2 million, um, you can put off paying the property tax, defer it out until the end of November. And uh, for all residents in Kingston, the property taxes are gonna be deferred until August 31st. So um, those are some small things that the city's doing right now, but I know we'll be meeting again in the fall um, when staff present that um, further report in August. Okay, one minute to e each of you. If Everything the government is deferring, especially the city government is deferring every, every you know, uh, property tax or all the other taxes you defer, defer, defer. People have no jobs. Business is not resuming, un God knows until when, and uh, normally. The people not going to have a norm normal income what they was having. Now they're having a debt on themselves for three months, four months, six months, which is a property tax. If they don't resume their normal jobs and normal paycheck, and they don't, uh, we don't open the business uh, normally, how we will be able to pay those uh, deferred payments and, uh, and the debt quickly to the government? And how, you know, how, how, are we, how are we gonna do that? How we are thinking this is intelligent idea that ask the people don't pay now, but pay, pay up later. And after down the road by the December, the city asked them, send them a notice. Okay, send me the, that as much you owe, and, and they don't have it. And also, the, uh, we are talking about expansion of the more uh, finan uh, financial aid to the community. I agree with that 100%, we, we need to do that. But if we don't have a money, we're already in deficit. The federal government is in a deficit. Where are we gonna get that money to expand that? And one minute to Councillor McLaren. 
ultimately, every society has to look uh, out for the, for the least, uh, or the most vulnerable people, and uh, the people who benefit the most from society are usually the ones who make the greatest income, and therefore should pay the most. Okay. And uh, Councillor Chappell? Certainly. Well, Kingston has declared a climate emergency, and I do believe it's, type, it's uh, hypocritical of the city of Kingston to own a natural gas utility. You could sell that natural gas utility for about $25 to $35 million and be out of the natural gas business altogether and utilize that money to stabilize our deficit. Councillor Osani. Most important thing right now is that restaurants are reopening, right? The retail stores are going back to having full hours again. And, you know, that gives more opportunity. I know a deferral, you eventually have to pay anyway, but at least with that deferral, it gives the opportunity for more people to get to, you know, employment and, and you know, some semblance of what their life was like uh, before COVID. And, you know, um, like if you just look even at the difference between May and here we are one month later at the end of June, you know, um, things are going back slowly um, for lots of people with the way that they were. And it just gives more time to put away money, you know, to, um, to be able to afford their monthly expenses again. Well, we are also talking about uh, it's never going to be normal. We have to adopt the new normal. According to new normal, I, as a small business owner, um, I see the, my, my business the, and the people work with us. N none of us has the, um, the normal income, either my, my employees or, or myself. But anyway, um, this is something we need to debate. We need to talk about it. And as, I think as a councillors and the city council member of that community, all of you have to think about it, work on it, that how we can help those uh, citizens who, who will have a debt. I mean, we definitely we will pay, and everyone will be able to pay uh, you know, uh, down the road. But how we can help them, give them easy time to repay that, that back. Thank you very much. That's all the time we have. Uh, and uh, We have a wonderful conversation. And all of you, please stay safe, stay home, and continue the good job and the consolation uh, to all of all three of you and please forward this conversation to the whole city uh, council for doing a great job keeping it down everything and you guys did fantastic and phenomenal job to keep it down as a government you act very quickly and very fast and then uh, this was the reason that we are safe as a kingstonian and we're proud to be kingstonian thank you very much that's all the time we have thank you for watching for the community voices until the next show take care of yourselves